Are you considering buying a second home or possibly a forever home, one you're going to retire in, and you're wondering how to pay for it? You might consider paying for it as being a short-term rental host. But before you do, today we're going to cover with you the pros and cons, so stick around. Hey, welcome back to Time to Downsize, the real estate company that helps you break that bondage of stuff and get you into a home that fits your needs. My name is Rich Sparks, associate broker. Today, we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of being a short-term rental host. Now, what do I mean by that? Airbnb is a short-term rental. Arvo, short-term rental. There's tons of companies out there. Does it make sense for you? Let's see if it could help you get that forever home paid for before you get there. Pro tip number one, you make more money. As a short-term rental host, according to Forbes magazine, overall, they make about 30% more than doing a regular rental. So that extra income can be applied right to your principal and get that puppy paid down quickly for you. Now with pros comes cons. Con number one, consistency. If you're using your secondary property as a regular rental, you have that income coming in every single month. Now with a short-term rental, there's no guarantee on that. So consistency and how often it's going to be filled. And this is going to take a little more homework on yourself to see if the area is conducive to it. But don't rule out an area just because it's not a high tourism area. But consistency will play into it. So if you're someone that's going to need that regular income guaranteed, this might not be for you. So con number one, consistency. Now stick around to the end. We're going to show you some of the projections for short-term rentals. They're pretty interesting. This might make it more viable for you. So make sure you stick around the end to check that out. Con number two, maintenance. Well, between every single guest you have, the property has to be thoroughly cleaned and it will make a difference on your reviews and how often you get that place filled. So con number two, you have higher maintenance levels to ensure a good quality visit between each and every guest you have come there. Now, just like con number two is maintenance, pro tip number two is Maintenance. That's right. If any of you have ever had a rental property, property, I know I have, and sometimes you're just not in there very often. It's not like you can just walk in whenever you want. The contracts say you have to make appointments to go in, to walk through your property. And we used to do this quite a bit. We would go through twice a year, swap out fire alarm batteries and this and that. But quite frankly, they didn't keep the house as clean as I would have liked it. After those people had left, we had a lot more maintenance on that other end. So I think a pro is that you know the property is getting thoroughly clean between each and every visitor. A clean property is just going to maintain better. It's going to have better value. So even though I put it over here for a con, because you got to do it, it's really a pro. Hey, quick question. If it's called Airbnb, then where's the second B? This isn't supposed to be bed and breakfast, but with Airbnbs, there are no breakfasts. So if you're wanting to be a host, don't worry, you don't have to cook them breakfast, no problem. But I just always thought that was odd. Also, our next video coming out, we're gonna be uh, comparing the various short-term rental companies like Airbnb, Verbo, and all those to see which one is best to be a host for. So make sure you check that out when it comes out. That'll be a week. Now, moving on, the next con. Regardless if you have guests or not, you're still paying electric, gas, water, lawn maintenance. It still has to be clean. You still have to have it heated and cooled. So that's still gonna take place. And that is a con because here again, with a regular rental property, normally the renter is paying those utility bills. That's part of it. Our next pro is flexibility of pricing. So here's kind of a cool thing. If the area you're interested in is has festivals or has certain times of the year that people just flock to that area, 
you can adjust the price of your Airbnb. So on those off months, you can adjust it down to attract people and travelers that would normally not come to that area during that time of the year. But during those high season times, you can bump up the price. And there's actually some automated ways to do that, which we're gonna be covering in a video after that next video, because I think it's pretty cool where why miss the opportunity? So that to me is a pro. So our next con, it's kind of a big con, is some cities restrict short-term rentals. And that's kind of a pain in the rump. So you have to make sure of wherever you're looking to do the short-term rentals, are there restrictions on it? Are they allowed? You could have issues with neighbors if you're in a sub or if you're in a condominium, there might be guidelines in your condominium guidelines saying you can't do short-term rentals. So you wanna make sure you check all that out prior to purchasing the property. But that is a con. And another video we're gonna have coming out, the 10 worst cities to do an Airbnb in. Hey, if you're getting some good information out of this, do me a favor, just smash that like button. It tells YouTube that I'm okay and Quite frankly, I really do appreciate it. So if you just take a second, boom, that's all you need to do. Now, the next one is a really cool pro. Due to short-term rentals, areas around the nation and around the world that are just beautiful, quaint little towns, they are starting to get some huge tourism. Because these are cities that maybe a big, you know, Hilton or Hyatt didn't want to go into, but people are doing short-term rentals and People are flocking to those areas. That's why I was saying earlier, just because your area is not necessarily known to be a high tourism area, you'd be surprised. A lot of business travelers now are looking for short-term rentals. They're kind of tired of hotels. So if you're in an area, it still might be some possibility. If you're curious, reach out to us. We'll help you research it. Now, my number one favorite pro is you can use the property. How cool is that? So you can do a short-term rental, maybe block out a couple of weeks out of the year, and you get to go and enjoy the property. Now, another big pro on this is you have now made your secondary home tax deductible. That's kind of cool. And if you happen to be going there two or three weeks out of the year to check on it, to do maintenance and such, your trip there and back is tax deductible. Nope, I am not an accountant. Please check with your accountant. I am a real estate agent. We always have to say that. No legal advice, no accounting advice. But those are some really strong tips. If you can make and write off your taxes on it, make money on it, help you pay for that home quicker. So when you are ready to retire or move on to a new area, it's getting taken care of for you and you don't have as big as a principal balance. That's pretty awesome. Now it's time for that bonus tip I told you about projections on short term rentals and what it means to you. According to Forbes magazine, one of the fastest growing short term rental hosts are senior citizens. Those folks that have equity in their home, they have that secondary home and they are seeing the value in doing short-term rentals. So that is huge. Now, as far as Google says, the average for people searching short-term rentals, and that's all these different companies, Airbnb, Verbo, et cetera, et cetera, has quadrupled in just the last couple of years. And the number one thing that shows you that short-term rentals are going absolutely nowhere, they're gonna be around. By 2022, short-term rentals are supposed to be $133 billion industry, which is almost triple just a decade ago. I think people are digging it. So once again, I hope you found this very, very interesting. If there's ever anything we can help you do, if you're looking to buy that vacation home or that secondary home, regardless if it's in South Dakota or if it's in Venezuela, I don't think you would do that right now. Maybe Ecuador, that's a much better choice. Give us a call, we can help you out. My name's Rich Sparks, time to downsize and I hope you have a great day.
Bye-bye now.